So one of your posts that really caught my attention was you were talking about melanoma and the genetic uh, predisposition that folks will have and that it might be less about the sun than it is about genetics. Can you talk about that a bit? Because I have thought that for years and I have never heard anybody in the world of dermatology say it out loud. Sure. This is a, I won't even say controversial topic because it is, it's, it's a very, most people don't even know about this. Um, but I'm not, I won't ask you this question because I, uh, I already kind of know how you feel. But if you were to take a bunch of physicians, sit them in a room and ask them, how it, it, how much sun exposure increases your chance of getting melanoma? And I feel like I can say this because I've actually seen groups of physicians get asked this. They might say that sun exposure might increase their chance of melanoma by maybe tenfold, twentyfold, thirtyfold. But in reality, all the studies we have suggest that increased sun exposure might increase it to maybe one to two times more. It might increase your chance to one to two times more likely to develop melanoma with sun exposure, which may or may not sound a lot. I think it's all perspective, but let's compare that to smoking, for example, and lung cancer. If you're smoking, you're going to have, again, the studies show different things, but depending on what study you look at, 10 to 30 times more of a chance to develop lung cancer. So if we're telling people not to smoke, we're helping them, you know, really not get lung cancer. But with melanoma, if it's really somewhere between sun exposure giving you one to two times a chance of developing melanoma, it's really not that much of a difference. And I know I'm already on my, you know, I've spoken a long time, but let's talk about African Americans. They have a 0.1% chance of developing melanoma. So let's say, one gets lots of sun exposure and their chances double, they have twice the risk. So that goes from 0.1% chance of getting melanoma increased to 0.2% chance of, de of developing melanoma, which really, the, both those numbers are really small. And I'm not sure it's really a big change. Well, and considering the rates of vitamin D deficiency in that population as well, because they have more melanin, so they're not making vitamin D as readily. Um, which, I mean, that's, I always joke, which I'm sure you don't totally agree with me on this, but I love this. Obviously I love the sun. I'm tan right now. I always joke that I will take my chances with the sun and the potential, you know, skin cancers that may come, which I think basal cell carcinoma really doesn't scare me nearly as much as they seem to want to make it out to be scary. I mean, these are, these are the far, the, the chances of basal cell carcinomas going deep and metastasizing like that's the least scary skin cancer in my opinion i want your opinion but that's my opinion. no i i agree i mean i have things to add but i agree i i do agree with what you're saying and that's going to be the most common one and then we've got squamous cell and that's a little bit scarier and it tends to want to you know go deeper and metastasize more readily from what i've researched uh but the melanoma thing when I first started learning about it, I was like, this is not even showing up in skin ex or sun exposed areas as much as you would think, right? Like it's in the lower legs and women and it might be on the torso and men. And I have actually found melanomas though. I will say the melanomas I have found on patients and sent them to dermatology to have it biopsied, they were all in highly sun exposed areas. So I'm to your point, like, yes, it's possible, but I always joke that I'd rather die tan and happy than vitamin D deficient and sunlight deficient, you know? So <laughs> it's like this risk reward ratio, but I am fully aware of my risks and I'm going to learn more from you today, but I don't think most people are. I think the industry has done a great job of scaring the crap out of everyone and getting them out of the sun and not even telling them the real risks of what some of these sunblocks do. So anyway, or I should say the, the sun screens, the chemical version. So that's the stuff I would love to talk more about today if you have the time, because I don't think people have the real facts here. Yeah. Just from what you said, we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> I feel like one thing I do have to say, and maybe, maybe we'll see if there's even time for this. I do have to say, no matter what, I'm not saying, you know, we, sh we shouldn't use sun protection because, you know, we're talking about melanoma risk with sun exposure. I guarantee melanoma aside, if we were to, you know, have, an, have a discussion, I, I could give you, you know, a run for your money why you should be wearing sunblock or sunscreen, excuse me, or, you know, sun protection. But um, 
uh, also, I don't know if you knew this, but sunblock, historically, we also refer to, we used to refer to sunscreen as chemical sunscreen and sunblock as physical sunscreen, but um, sunblock theoretically doesn't even exist anymore. The FDA actually, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but they actually um, said you can't use the term sunblock. Oh, that was, I did not I know that. a decade ago. So there's mineral sunscreens and there's chemical sunscreens. And I'm not a fan of chemical sunscreens, but I do use mineral sunscreens, which I think are more of a mechanical blockage. And there's issues there, right? Like you could have them be nanoparticle and that can get into your skin and that can ruin reefs. 